Is somebody left the YouTube running? Ah, well, it sure is great to be back here in my regular weekly uploading of my YouTube channel. Uh, here in, in 2019, yeah, it's totally, the, ah, good thing it's not the future at all, because who knows what that could bring. What even is a pandemic? COVID? Never heard of it. 2020, that's far in the future. I had you completely fooled, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay, okay, so it's been a little while since I last uploaded back in, uh, oh, when was it? 2019, yeah, 2019. I'm not even wearing a watch. Well, uh, so it's been a little while. Okay, I had some technical issues, and then there was this, there was this little thing called the pandemic and lockdown. Yeah, and life happens, it just, it happens. And it happened to me. But here we are back again, and I have got some really great ideas here. And I hope that I'll be able to pull them off better than I do my videography. Hopefully that will improve too. What I have in mind for this channel, and I'm so excited, what I have in mind for this channel is I want to focus on stories, generally. Stories. Like, not just writing of the stories. Not just books, not just all stories. Because here's the thing. Stories are like life, right? Life is a story. That's how we relate to life. That's how we view life. All of life is a story that we're telling ourselves. From the moment we wake up, we have our thoughts of how the day is going to go. And then we go through the day. And we've got this narration going all the time, even if we're not aware of it. So, like, stories are life. This is how humans view the world. So what I want to do here is I want to cover, like, all kinds of storytelling. All kinds. So pretty much everything. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of overachieving here. Wait here, just for, for instance, let's break it down. Okay, we've got fiction, we've got nonfiction. These stacks are not fiction and nonfiction, but we'll just say, we'll just say, for instance, fiction, nonfiction, right? Different ways of viewing things. With fiction, the story is the limit. Or is it? What I mean is the way you're telling it is the limit. Because fiction, different types of fiction, sure, but they have rules. They have rules to them. Every culture has its own type of storytelling and those stories have rules as to how they're told so that the audience can understand them. So we may not even be conscious of this. It might not be until we hear another person telling the story and we're going, well, that's not how it should go. It doesn't make sense. So that's just co covering uh, the very basics of fiction. Because as I said, e even in your particular culture, every type of fiction has its rules, and I'll cover that in a minute. It's the same with nonfiction. Nonfiction. It's the same with nonfiction. We have facts, but when we tell the story, we don't tell all the facts, right? We only stick to the interesting ones. We present it in a way that's interesting for the reader. So nonfiction also has its own storytelling rules. Okay, let's start with uh, breaking it down. Break it down. Books. Books are a good place to start, I think, because that's what a lot of us think of when we think of telling stories, right? It's interesting because books work with your imagination. So the story becomes a personal thing. You see the characters in a certain way. You see the setting in a different way. The author describes it, but only so far. And you fill in the details yourself. However, even if it's working with your imagination, it's still a shared experience. Which is weird because you're sitting there reading it on your own, right? Nice and quietly. But it's a shared experience between you and the author. So it becomes like a collaboration between you and the author. Between the two of you, you're telling the story. It is still a personal experience because it's between the author and anyone who happens to read it. And then it becomes a different sort of collaboration every time. But then again, every person 
experiences it differently, even from the author. The author is seeing it a different way than anybody who reads it. So it just, oh my gosh, it's exciting. I do want to make a quick note about audiobooks. Audiobooks are slightly different, and I feel that's because of the use of a narrator. A uh, narrator, the way they tell it can influence the way that you experience the book. It can, it can influence the way you see the characters in your mind because of the way their voice sounds, and you might automatically put something to it that fits that voice. Also, if you just, if you have a narrator who's not quite the right narrator for that type of book, that can make a huge difference too. Like, you might not enjoy it as much, you might not see things the same way, you might not even finish it. That's happened to me. Movies! Similar to books, similar to books, of course, because they are telling a story as much as anything else, but the imagination doesn't quite come into play as much, does it? Because the visuals are filled in for you. At the same time, even that can be different. Uh, if nothing else, what if you're sight impaired and watching a movie? Then you have descriptive audio to fill in the spots that you're missing, and that can also be kind of like an audiobook. Same type of thing with the narrator's voice influencing how you experience the events of the story. TV. Ooh. TV is similar to movies. But, but, here's the thing. TV episodes have to fit into a certain time block. We're talking traditional TV here, not streaming or whatever. Um, I don't know if streaming has a time limit, but I don't think it does, uh, because it's not really necessary, is it? Traditional TV has to fit into a certain time block because you have a schedule, and then you're going to have a certain amount of uh, advertisements. So, you know, your typical sitcom will be 21, 23 minutes, and then your hour-long program is actually more like 43 minutes. So whatever story you tell, it makes a difference how you tell it because it has to fit into that time block. Newspapers! I'm going really old school. You know, I still get a newspaper, and I really do advocate that. Uh, you subscribe to your local newspaper because your local news gets you headlines that really, typically your local newspaper is going to be more fair and unbiased than anything that out there that really claims to be. But also there's the fact that local newspapers will report on local news, stuff that's happening in your area, which is going to affect you more than anything else out there. Now, as to newspaper journalism, generally it's nonfiction, but it's still telling a definite story. It has to present it in a way that's interesting to the reader. And the layout of the newspaper makes a big difference, too. Actually, <laughs> there was a, an article, an editorial in my paper about this, about the way they lay out the paper. It was really interesting. They have to figure out not only the size of the stories and when to continue them and the size of the titles and all that, but they have to figure out what things people are going to want to read on the front page, what things they're going to want to read next to each other in a certain location, what's going to catch the reader's eye first. A lot of thought goes into this. Digital newspapers, pretty much the same, but of course the layout is different. And digital newspapers tend to be a little more sound bitey. You know, they'll have the links to the stories and all that. Um, so they tend to be a little more soundbite because readers who read things online tend to expect things faster. Like a traditional newspaper, you just sit down, open it up, read for a little while. It's, it's like a book. You expect to sit down and read, and that's what you're going to do. If you're just checking the news on your phone or whatever, then it might be like, okay, I'm going to check this real quick, then I'm going to do something else. Magazines, going full old school, all the way. I love my old school media. Magazines are similar to newspapers because layout is important there too. They tend to be nonfiction, not all of them. Uh, there tend to be more pictures quite often. But magazines tend to be more focused and less immediately topical. They tend to have a certain subject. Think popular mechanics, popular science, you know, a magazine is something you pick up because you want to read about this particular topic. 
social media. Okay, we're getting into the 21st century finally. Social media. There's an immediacy about it, isn't it? Because again, if you're looking at stuff online, it's like, okay, I'm just going to check this real quick. Scroll, 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 scroll. Three hours later, you're not done scrolling. But the idea is that you want to check it real quick. Now, I think most of us know that the news on social media is not always news. It depends where you get it, and you'll want to check your sources. However, I will say that I have learned some things on social media that I wouldn't be able to get other places. Typically, it just depends on the platform you're on and the limitations of that platform. The news that you find on there can be more fluffy. You know, it might not be news, hard-hitting, serious news. There is the algorithm that makes a huge difference. And that can be very annoying because when I read the news, I want to read the news. I don't need to just find what interests me. And of course, if you're reading something on social media, then they need to post regularly to keep their audience interested. And that applies to traditional news outlets as well. Phone calls. Yay. More old school. Real, real, real phone calls. Talking on your phone. Using your phone to talk on. A crazy concept. I hate phone calls. I hate talking on the phone. Phone calls. A conversation between two or more people, typically just two, is storytelling based on voice alone. The story that you're telling is a collaboration between those in the call. You're taking turns telling your own story, but those two stories are coming together to make one story, generally speaking. The surroundings that you're in while you're making the call may inform that story. You might be looking around and be like, oh, yeah, I, sh I forgot to mention this thing that I bought that's here on the counter. Or I might look at the calendar. Yes, I have a real calendar. You might look at the calendar and say, oh, yes, this thing happened, and I forgot to tell you about that. Texting. Similar to phone calls, but not really, because it's a short form. It's quick. It's There's that immediacy about it. You want to get it done, over with. Here's just a quick note for something. or you can do those long texts like what you doing, nothing, just sitting here thinking, you know, go on and on and on. I've never done that myself, but I've heard tell that people do it. In person conversations, this applies to conversations and to storytelling. Now, as I was saying, conversation is a form of storytelling because you got the two people telling their own stories and then coming together to tell one. But it can make a difference if you're just standing there talking to the person. I personally prefer that because I like to see their reactions to what I'm saying. And that can, that can flesh out the story that they're telling and can also temper my storytelling. Because I am less likely to say something they don't want to hear because I can see their reaction. And that's just one example. You're taking cues from the other person and also from your mutual surroundings since you'll both be in the same place. Note this does not apply to Zoom calls. That's kind of another whole kettle of fish, but I'm not getting into everything today. And then also you may keep your time constraints in mind on both those and phone calls because you may need to be somewhere. So that can inform your method of storytelling, what story you're telling, so on and so forth. An in-person storyteller is going to be standing there telling the story and their facial expressions their movements will also inform how you're receiving that story, but you're not a participant in it. You're just an audience member. Okay, so this, this is, I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up for now. That's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. It's just, just pointing out that there are stories everywhere. And that's basically my excuse because I want to cover how we tell stories. I want to cover books. I want to cover movies. I want to do all this stuff. I want to do how the different ways we tell stories compares to the other. I've covered that a little bit before, um, but I mean like different versions of stories, so on and so forth. Oh, I've got all these ideas. I'm so excited. I hope you are too. If you're not, that's okay. Maybe I wasn't explaining myself well enough. Maybe I wasn't telling the story right. Maybe you're just distracted by this glare in my glasses from the lighting. I'd swear. 
gonna try and get better at videography. I, I just, it's a work in progress. So am I, aren't we all? Okay, but for now, I'm gonna wrap it up, and I promise I'll be back. Hopefully soon. Sooner than last time. Anyway, that's the plan, and I hope to see you all next week. Bye! Conan! Oh, you're such a helper. You're so helpful. Yes, you are. Look at you. So helpful.